this talk is going to be one 50-minute live demo. I, I'm optimistic. Before we get started, uh, hopefully you are in the right room. You're here to learn about Jenkins. Um, but just a little bit about me to start. I've been a PHP dev for about 12 years. Um, I started out writing Perl. Um, I wrote Go, Ruby, Python, all kinds of things in the last, in the last decade. Um, but one thing that didn't change is that I'm a lazy developer. Laziness is a virtue. Why do something over and over when a computer can do it for you? And that's where Jenkins comes in. Um, Jenkins has been around a while. I'm sure most of you have seen Jenkins 1.0, had to work with that horrible XML configuration, click through the UI, configure jobs that way. The good news is, at the end of 2016, Jenkins 2 came out, and they got, well, they didn't get rid of all that. You can still do it if you really, really want, but you don't have to anymore. And this talk is a 50-minute whirlwind tour of going from nothing to having a PHP app running tests, being packaged and automatically deployed to an instance. 50 minutes, it's that easy. You ready to go? This may or may not work. No. Right. It has worked in the past, I promise. But let's see how it goes. We're going to install Jenkins. In fact, before that, we're going to create the machines on DigitalOcean that we're going to use. We're going to install Jenkins, create a new Laravel app, run the tests, get code coverage, um, make it build automatically whenever we push to GitHub, create a reusable library so that we don't have to copy and paste between our apps, build an Ubuntu package, and then automatically deploy our app with Ansible. 50 minutes. Can we do it? Come on, let's go. So we start. We need to create some machines. I'm using DigitalOcean for this. So I'm creating two machines, one for Jenkins and one for our, one for our application. That's just hitting their API with a command line tool. And when we list our apps, our instances, we get the IP addresses back. Jenkins runs on port 8080, which is good, but there's not actually anything there yet. So let's install it. Let's log into the, the Jenkins instance. Hopefully SSH has started by now. It has not. It takes about 10 to 30 seconds, depending on how lucky you are. I was unlucky this time. Man, this is not off to a good start, is it? Come on, DigitalOcean, don't let me down. There we are. So now we've got this empty box for running Jenkins. Jenkins give you really, really straightforward installation instructions. Literally, copy <coughs> and paste. I mean, you should always understand what you're doing here. We're, we're trusting the GPG key to say that the package is assigned correctly. We're adding the package repo to our list of sources. And then we're going to install Jenkins. App get install Jenkins. Now, this is going to take a little while because Jenkins and I know this is a dirty word at PHP conferences, but Jenkins is written in Java. I know. It runs um, on the JVM. It requires Java 8. Um, but it always has done, and it probably always will do. Uh, there's nothing we can do to change that. Um, I did have an issue with Jenkins. Um, I came into work one day, and Jenkins wouldn't start. They're not the best at semantic versioning. In a patch release, they bumped the requirement from Java 7 to Java 8. So you do have to be a little bit careful sometimes. But for all its faults, it is one of the best things we've got. Jenkins is installed. If I go back to the install, there's Jenkins. Five minutes past four. Like five minutes, and we have our instance. We created virtual machines. We installed Jenkins. Now, when you install Jenkins, it sets a password so that no one else can get to it before you can. So let's unlock it by logging into the server and taking out that password. And this is where it allows me to create a user and to install plugins. 
Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to install all of the suggested ones. I'm just going to install the ones that we need, which are the, let's make that bigger, credentials binding plugin uh, for secret management, the GitHub plugin for automatically scanning um, an organization on GitHub, and the pipeline plugin, uh, which is used for defining your Jenkins builds in code. Those are the only three that I need. And if I take you out one step, this is downloading them. They're all packaged as JAWS. They just get downloaded into the right directory, and then Jenkins will restore it itself. Credentials binding, fairly quick. GitHub branch source, fairly quick. Pipeline takes forever. And that's because Pipeline isn't actually a plugin. It's a collection of plugins. Um, that's the wonderful thing about Jenkins. Everything is a plugin. They recently launched a new UI for it, but instead of just changing the default, they wrote a plugin. It means that you don't get stuck maintaining and patching things that you don't really need. You just install what you need to get your job done. This should be done in about five to 10 seconds, and then we should be able to log in to Jenkins. That's another two minutes, and we've installed all of the plugins that we need. I'm going to create a user. If I can spell my own name right. Seven finish. Start using Jenkins. Seven minutes. Jenkins installed, configured, plugins installed. Doing well. But it doesn't actually do anything. Like, it's all well and good that we can go to Jenkins, but it's not actually doing any work for us. So let's create a new job. I have Michael Testorg registered as an organization name on GitHub. This is a GitHub organization. And what this will do is it will configure everything in the background, start scanning that org. Now, you can do this without credentials, but you will hit the GitHub rate limit very quickly. So I'm just going to add a set here. And that's just a username and password to authenticate with the GitHub API. Um, skip over the behaviors for now. Uh, you can do cool things like don't build branches that are already based as a pull request, so you don't get duplicate builds. And then we've got this project recognizers section. And where it says Jenkins file, that's the file in your project that Jenkins will look for to recognize that it can build it. If I save it, Jenkins will go off. It will scan the organization. It's found this repo called Demo Electron, um, which we can completely ignore because that was something different. But it has a Jenkins file. Um, that's for a separate article that I wrote. And what Jenkins will do is it will actually it will try and build that project. Ah, GitHub API usage. Let's go back to that job definition. I must have forgotten to choose the, I forgot to choose the credentials. And you see how we got rate limited straight away. So I'm just going to kick off a new scan, cancel that one. So it's proposing demo electron. It found the Jenkins file. And it's here. And it tried to build it. And it failed. And that's because I don't have Node or anything like that on this machine. Let's ignore it for now. We, we don't need anything in this repo. Instead, we're going to create a new Laravel app. So if we, we jump back to the terminal, there's, there's nothing in here, honest. We're going to create a new Laravel app. I'm just going to call it basic, and I'll just download all of the dependencies. It has one, two unit tests, things like that. That application is now ready. Let's push it up to GitHub, because we don't have a repo for it either. So new repo. When I said we're going to do everything, I meant we're going to do everything. So it's just called basic. And we're just going to commit everything. Uh, 
need to get commit. And then we're going to push that up. And what's going to happen now is that Jenkins isn't going to do a thing. Because it's, it's going to detect it, but it doesn't have that special Jenkins file. And if we go back to Jenkins and we scan the organization, we can see that it proposed basic, but the Jenkins file was not found. So that's why it didn't do anything. So let's add a Jenkins file. A Jenkins file is the file that contains all the instructions for how Jenkins should build your project. Everything starts by specifying a node to run on. In previous roles, uh, we had to build on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, so the machines were tagged with what operating system they are. Here, master is a special tag um, that is your master Jenkins server, so we're just going to run on the single node that we created. You don't have to use stages, but it really helps. Um, so a stage is just a collection of actions to run. So I'm just going to do a little demo here. And all we're going to do is make Jenkins say hello world. It doesn't do anything with our project. It just builds the basics. We're going to push that up. And this time, if we scan our organization, It found the Jenkins file. And it's appeared. And if we go into the build, it was successful. And it just says, hello world. Now, if we make any changes to that Jenkins file and push it up, Jenkins should automatically detect those changes and rerun the build. 13 minutes. We have a project. It's building, it's not doing anything useful, but it's, it's being automatically detected and it's running the instructions that we gave it. So back to the Jenkins file. What's the first thing that we need to do when we're trying to build a project? We need to clone the source code. Now, check out SCM is a, a clever thing that Jenkins has, so you can set specific repositories and branches and things like that. But SCM is a magic variable that automatically contains all of the correct information for uh, multi-branch pipelines. So GitHub has told it what repo, what branch, and SCM contains that. Um, once we've got that, we probably want to run Composer. And then run our unit tests. Now. If you've ever configured Jenkins before, you'll notice that this is way, way easier than clicking through all of those screens and finding the right checkboxes. Like, we're PHP developers. We know how to run Composer install. We can tell Jenkins, run the shell command, Composer install. We know how to run PHP unit. We tell Jenkins, run the shell command, vendor bin PHP unit. Like, this is all familiar to us. It's what we do in our day-to-day -day jobs. So if I save that, push it up, my commit messages for this repo are going to be horrific. But if we go back to basic and give it 10 to 20 seconds, there it is. The job's been picked up. That's a webhook from GitHub to our Jenkins instance. And it failed. That's because PHP isn't installed on the server. Composer, not found. But it did. It cloned our repo, and it tried to run Composer. So what we're going to do is just jump onto the Jenkins server, install all of our dependencies. And earlier, I mentioned a new UI that they built as a plugin. That takes a little while to install. So I'm just going to kick that off now in the background so that I can show it to you later on. Uh, it's called Blue Ocean, and it's quite nice. Um, this is another one of those meta packages um, where there's about 20, 30 other packages underneath it. Um, in fact, there you are, all of those pending ones. 
a part of Blue Ocean, and we just want Jenkins to restart when the installation's complete and there are no running jobs. It's quite nice, it will detect if there are running jobs and not kill them halfway through. And just like that, PHP is finished installing. So if we, we go back to our build and try and build it now, hopefully it should get a little bit further. Composer install, package operations, and Jenkins is restarting. Thank you, Jenkins. I just told people how great you are. Watch Jenkins is restarting. Um, I also created an app server earlier that we're going to de deploy our application to. That will also need PHP on it. So I'm just going to drop in. Oh. Needs one up, get update. And install all of the dependencies on there as well so that they're there and ready when we need to run our application. Jenkins is back. Almost couldn't remember my password then. That would have been embarrassing. And the job is running. So this is all the Composer install. It's downloading uh, Symphony Thanks, uh, Dragman Tank, Cron Expression, all of the dependencies for our application. This takes a little while the first time. It's having to fetch everything from the, the archives on GitHub. But in future runs, that will all be cached. So that will be basically instant. And things failed. It actually ran the tests, but there was an error. No application encryption key has been specified. That, that's a Laravel error. Um, and that just means that I forgot to copy the .m file across. So if we go back to our Jenkins file, there are a few ways you can handle this. You could fetch the .m file for your Jenkins instance from S3. You could commit it to the repo. You could do all kinds of things. In the interest of speed, I'm just going to add a stage that copies it and generates a new key as part of the build, because we don't rely on the, the encryption key in any of our tests. And that needs to go before the tests. When I commit this and push it up, once again, Jenkins will receive that webhook from GitHub and start the build. And hopefully this time you should see how much faster it actually is. So build number four. Composer done. Test pass. I think we just had a green build. We just had a green build. Yeah. Loving the enthusiasm. 18 minutes. 18 minutes from absolutely nothing to having a brand new project building on Jenkins. Not bad, eh? I mean, we can keep going, because this is all things that we could do on a local machine. What if we want to start doing things like code coverage? So. We've got our ex-unit reports. We could put those in. We could use Clover. Now, this one looks a little bit scary. Um, for a PHP unit to run coverage, I just need to change the, um, the line to actually output the coverage reports. And I'm going to commit this up and then talk you through it. So I added a couple of things there very quickly. Um, one is that we output our JUnit log, log files and our Clover coverage report into a folder called reports. JUnit is a Jenkins plugin that was pulled in earlier um, as a dependency. And we're saying, I want a JUnit report, look in reports slash XUnit. And then we've got this monstrosity. And this is what happens when plugin authors don't update their plugins to take advantage of the Jenkins file. It doesn't mean that you can't use their plugins. It just means that you've got to call the Java classes directly and pass in all of the correct parameters. It's not nice, but it's better than not being able to use a plugin just because they haven't updated to the latest standards. You were saying call the Clover publisher class, look in reports, it's called coverage. We're aiming for 10% coverage for healthy, 5% for unhealthy, zero for failing. I have low standards. 
and this time it's filled again. Let's take a look. The nice thing about Jenkins is it shows you all of the commands that it's running. No implementation of interface Clover Publisher. That's because I haven't installed the Clover plugin. So back to the drawing board we go. Manage Jenkins, plugins. Remember when I said everything was a plugin? So Clover. Not Clover PHP. Uh, Clover PHP was written a long time ago and then abandoned. Clover is a standard. It doesn't matter whether you're working in Java, PHP, Python. If your application will output Clover files, this plugin will work. I'm just going to restore it, Jenkins, so that that gets picked up. It's going to take a few seconds, and then we'll run the, the build again. You start to see all of these additional things that Jenkins can do. Like, how many of you run code coverage and then look at Clover reports on your local machine? Yeah, a couple. I take my hat off to you. That's pretty good. But people don't, in general. People just run the test, say, yep, it looks green, ship it. Jenkins can do things like code coverage percentages, health of the code. So basic, build. Oh, master. Build now. And this time, it should fly through, because we've got all of our uh, composer dependencies cached, things like that. You see these things at the top? You know I said you don't have to use stages, but they're really useful. This is why. It tells you how long you spent in each stage, so you can find out why your pipelines are taking longer than intended. 50.7 method percentage, 50.7% uh, method coverage, as according to Clover. You can see the test results. We'll look at the unit tests, example test, test basic. This is all the X unit input. So now Jenkins is actually starting to add more than just running unit tests on your local machine. This is good, but this is all contained in one Jenkins file, and this is one Laravel project. What happens when I've got a second Laravel project, or a third, or a fourth, or a hundredth? Like, if you want to change a single thing, you'd have to go through all of those projects and update your Jenkins file, right? Thankfully, Jenkins has you covered there as well. So it has a, a concept of a global library, and that's just a set of reusable steps that you can call from your Jenkins file. And if you update the step in your global library, it gets updated in every pi pipeline that depends on it. So we're going to take this, and we're going to turn it in to a global library. Now, Jenkins runs on the JVM. Uh, all the Jenkins file that you saw and the global library are actually written in a language called Groovy, um, which is interesting, but it's functional. Because it runs on the JVM, um, sorry, I'm going to create a folder called Jenkins, Jenkins Pipeline to hold this. Because it runs on the JVM, you've got to respect the uh, JVM naming standards, and that is not right. So it's source com Michael Heap, because my domain is michaelheap.com. What we need to do next is define a Laravel project, because I don't want to build up the, the individual steps for every Laravel project. I just want to say, this is written in Laravel, treat them all the same way. And there's a lot of stuff in here. We've got this run method, which tries to execute a step, passing in any options. And if there are any exceptions, it fails the build. We've got a couple of things defined. So for every Laravel project, we want to check out the source code, then we want to run Composer install. We did more than that, but I'll just show you implementing those two first. So if I check out, if I try and write checkout.groovy, 
every step looks something like this. It's just a, a single execute method. And it's just what we had before. So that's stage checkout, checkout SCM. It's exactly the same as what we would have put in the Jenkins file, except now it's in somewhere, it's in a global library that we can reference. Um, let's do the same for Composer install. Uh, the documentation on this isn't particularly great. Um, I banged my head against the desk for about a week trying to get this working. Uh, but this will all be on GitHub for you to take a look at later on. So, check out and Composer install. Let's push that up to GitHub. Add everything. There's no repo for it. So off we go to GitHub again. Create a new repo. I'm going to call this one Jenkins Pipeline. Jenkins Pipeline. We're going to push this up. And now this is available on GitHub to be pulled in. But we haven't actually told Jenkins what to do. We haven't told it where this, pi this global pipeline lives. So if we go back to Jenkins, we go into manage Jenkins, configure system, thinking, and then scroll down to global pipeline libraries. We can add a new one. Its name in a really small box is Jenkins Pipeline. Default version, we're just going to grab from master. We want to load it from modern source control using GitHub. We're going to use the credentials that I provided earlier. Um, the owner is Michael Testorg. So you don't actually have to depend on the pipeline library that your organization owns. You can get it from anywhere. And the, brand, the repository is Jenkins Pipeline. Now, any job that builds will have that pipeline available. If we go back to our Jenkins file, we've got all of the steps in there. I'm just going to delete those. Like, we don't need them anymore. We've got a global library. And I've forgotten what it is. Type. So now, we still have to run it on the master node. But we just say that this pipeline is a new microheat Laravel project. And we execute it, and we tell it what the application's name is. And it's just called Michael test in this case. Push that up. And I really hope this works. Basic. So it's seven minutes since our last success. We're 29 minutes into the talk. We've installed Jenkins, we've created a project, we've built it, we've extracted those steps into a global library, and now we're trying to build it again. And this time it failed. What did I do wrong? Oh, I think I missed an option when I was configuring it. Um, so by default, I don't think Jenkins will pull in global libraries. You've got to say this is loaded implicitly. Yep, there it is. I missed a checkbox. So in your Jenkins file, you can say grab this global libra library or grab that local libra global library. Um, I just want it to be pulled in all of the time. So let's check that box. Try again. There we are. And this time, we can see that it was pulled in just here, fetching upstream changes from Jenkins pipeline. And it ran. 
it cloned our codes and it ran Composer install. That's exactly what we told it to do. Now, this Laravel project, it's, it's only got two things. When really, we want lots of things. So we put in everything that we did before. We check out, we compose or install. I didn't actually create a reusable stage for create the environment keys. And that's because it's very specific to a Laravel project. So why not just keep it in that pipeline definition? Then we run PHP unit. We run X unit. Uh, we run coverage, and this time I'm passing in parameters for what I consider healthy, unhealthy, and failing. My, my, my standards have gone up. I expect 80% for it to be healthy now. And then we do something different. We say, if we're on master, and only if we're on master, first of all, check that I can actually proceed. And if I can, build a dev file and deploy it. Now, we've got most of these steps up until this point, uh, but they're not in our global library yet. So if we go into source, like heap, we've just got those three. Fortunately, here's one that I made earlier. And now we've got all of those steps all implemented, and they're all what we expect. If I show you X unit, it's just what we saw in our Jenkins file. The ones that you might be interested in are confirm, um, build, and deploy, because we've not seen these steps before. Jenkins will let you prompt the user to say, do you want to deploy this build? In fact, it will let you prompt to say anything, and you just say yes or no. Depending on the interface, it will say yes or no, proceed or abort. If we get past this, we try and build a dev file with a tool called FPM. We don't actually have FPM installed on our Jenkins server yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that in the background. That will create a Debian package that we can deploy. And then finally, we're going to run an Ansible playbook. It reads the secure credentials to get the SSH key to use. That means that even if you wipe the machine, so long as you've got a Jenkins backup, it can still work. It's not looking for files on disk. It's not looking for special privileged SSH keys. All of the config for your job now lives in your code repos and in Jenkins. All of the credentials, everything. To do this deployment, we're also going to need Ansible. Um, which some of you might have seen in Teus's talk just before. Uh, it's a relatively simple playbook, but let's just install that in the background whilst we're waiting. So these three new steps, let's push that up. Uh, get push. And because I added that to the Laravel um, project definition, our actual application doesn't change because our application is still a Laravel project. It's just so happened that the definition of that project has changed under the hood. So if we build, it should get all the way to proceed or abort. Why not? If I've done wrong this time. Unable to resolve class PHP unit. So it is case sensitive. And the way it works is it uses the, uh, the class name, uh, the file name as the class name. So PHP unit dot groovy new PHP unit. Ah, of course, because uh, I did git commit minus am. It didn't actually add the new files. On the plus side, 
you can see that this isn't like a video or anything like that. This is actually happening. I always feel like the mistakes make it feel a little bit more authentic. So that's pushed up to GitHub. And let's try rebuilding our project again. And this time it should go through checkout, build, test, X unit, coverage. And then we should get a new prompt. Do you want to deploy this build? Proceed or abort? Yeah, apologies at the back, it is right at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'm going to abort this build uh, for one reason and one reason only, and that's that we don't actually have an Ansible playbook to deploy it yet. Now I'm going to show you the app server before we get started. It's just your standard Apache 2 install page. I'm not going to build the Ansible playbook live on stage. Um, again, I'm going to take one that I did earlier and just copy it in and just change the IP address where we're, that we're deploying to. I just need to grab that here. Then once again, add that folder, commit, and push. If we go back to Jenkins, when you're building up your Jenkins file and testing, you will see a lot of red. Um, that's just the way things are with Jenkins. The tooling for testing locally isn't quite there yet. Um, but really, if you can get it going green every couple of commits, that works really well. Um, do we want to proceed? This time I do want to proceed. It failed. Because I forgot to install FPM. I installed all of its dependencies. but not the actual gem itself. Now, FPM is a Ruby package. Um, if you've never seen it before, it's fantastic. You can build RPMs, deb files, um, the rest of the zip files. Basically, any package that you want to deploy, FPM can build it. If FPM isn't making packaging easier for you, that's a bug in FPM. That is its mission statement. Um, if any of you have ever had the pleasure of writing RPM spec files by hand, um, FPM is a, it's a godsend. It's wonderful. For those of you that haven't had the, the good fortune to write RPM spec files, don't. Um, you can get the PHP ones by Remy Collier. I think that RPM spec files are about 1,700 lines long. Like, it's just a mission to get through it. Um, but FPM takes all that pain away. If, in fact, if you go to michaelheap.com, there's, there's an intro to FPM there. That's how much I love it. Whilst that's installing, I'm just going to show you Blue Ocean. Now, Blue Ocean was actually designed, unlike the rest of Jenkins. Um, and by that, I mean it had UI people, um, people that know what it looks like. And it actually looks quite nice. You can click in to a project. You can see everything. You can see the latest commit message. You can click in and you can see each stage. So this is where stages come in. So instead of just that wall of text that you see in the normal log, you can see what happened for checkout, what happened for build, create env keys. We confirm deploys. But it failed when building the dev file because FPM wasn't installed. FPM is now installed, so I'm actually just going to click this button here to kick off the build again. Waiting for the run to start, it gets picked up. And it actually looks quite nice, Blue Ocean. We get this nice big deploy this build button instead of just that little bit on the text. This time it's packaging. Build failed, or failed that time. This time, the deploy failed. See, this is where Blue Ocean falls down. It's very pretty, but it's not entirely functional. Um, 
I don't know what it is about the original UI. Um, I always find myself using this. Ah, yes. So it's tried to deploy using the SSH key that I haven't put in there yet. But that is the last thing. So we installed the credentials management plugin earlier. So we can go in. We can add a credential. This is a secret file. I'm just going to upload my SSH key. This isn't my actual SSH key. Demo one. And the ID is important here. So I've called it SSH-key. And the reason I've called it that is because that's what I've used in my pipeline definition. If I kick off the build, I can show you that. So just here, credentials ID, SSH key. That has to match exactly, otherwise Jenkins won't be able to find it. Yep, I want to deploy this. Come on, Jenkins. It builds, it runs Ansible, and this time it's actually running. It's found the dev file that I built. It's deploying it, so that it's now on the remote server. It's installing it. It's taking a little while to install, and it's done. And if we go back to this, and we refresh, we get a Laravel app. 